What's up? You're watching Mobo TV. My name is Annabelle, and I am joined by the mastermind behind Kojo Funds and Abracadabra's Done Talking. It's GA. How's it going? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Now, obviously, Done Talking is up for best song at the Mobo Awards this year. How does that feel? Do you know what? I was quite shocked, to be honest. Like, the song came out last October, which was just after the last Mobos, so I wasn't expecting it to get recognised for this year's one. But, you know, luckily we're here. Just thankful, grateful. Absolutely. And I want you to take me back to the very, very beginning of producing for you. How did you first get into music? Um, well, I've always, I've always loved music. I've always loved instrumentals, actually. Like, I remember having like a little MP3 player, like half of the songs was just instrumentals. Like I just used to listen to instrumentals and um, I think I went to music school in like year seven, 2007. And I wasn't that good. I didn't learn much as well. But um, once I got into the choir at church, I started to understand music a bit more as well. And then about 2009, 2010, I was introduced to like music making softwares on like computer and stuff. And um, from there, I was just messing around, messing around and I just keep getting better and better. And yeah, here I am. And now here you are, MOBO Awards. So would you say that, um, you said you went to music school, and but would you say that a lot of your production has come from self-teaching yourself from tutorials online or that sort of thing? Yeah, definitely. Um, maybe not necessarily like tutorials online, but um, just like trial and error, um, inspiration, like taking inspiration from other people, um, and just like enjoying yourself and not taking it too seriously, really. Can you remember the first ever track that you produced? Like the first finished track that you produced? <sighs> but with vocals on it. Yep. With vocals. Um, my boy, his name's SD. He had a part, he had a song called Rave Scene. And he got one of his mates on it and we slapped it on Facebook and it got like 200 listens. Okay, 200 listens. <laughs> and now you're looking at millions of views. Yes, it's ridiculous. Onwards and upwards. Now I have to ask, what does GA stand for? GA stands for Great Till I'm Ancient. Okay, and is that <laughs> Great Till I'm Ancient? And did you come up with that concept after you came up with GA? Or did you come up with, was it the other way around? What's the story? Well, at first, I didn't have a meaning for GA. Like everyone just kept saying, ah, what do you call yourself? And I didn't have like a name to give myself, so I just said GA. And then later on people started asking, what does GA stand for? And I said, I'll get back to you. And then um, like there was a lot of pressure on what it meant, so eventually I found something that kind of fitted like me and the, the name itself, so I just stuck with Great Talent Ancient. It's a good one, you've got a lot to live up to now. A lot, <laughs> the pressure's still on. So let's talk about the track with Kojo Fonz and Abracadabra, Done Talking. We had um, SK laughing at how I was saying it earlier on. How do you say that just in normal life when you're not singing along to it? Done talking. Done talking, there you go. I need to say it like that. <laughs> but I want to know, <clears throat> right, how the song was born from the very, very beginning. Who called who to the studio? How did it come about? Well, as you know, I'm pretty well known with Kojo. So we was in the studio like day in, day out. I was trying to find like new sounds and do something new with some new sounds. So um, I said, I'll go away for a bit. I'll go back home and work from home for a bit. I worked from home for about a week and I was just working on beats. And then I sent him the beat for Done Talking. And he said, yeah, say nothing. And then um, he vocaled it, like a rough vocal. And I was like, I'm not too sure. Like he done the chorus, done talking, and I was like, it sounds a bit repetitive. It doesn't really sound like it will catch. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, trust me. So I was like, all right, cool. So we went to the studio, and he recorded it, and we got a mate to do some like harmonies underneath and stuff. And we left a space open for for the second verse. And um, yeah, once it once it got like touched up and, and edited and everything, I was like, okay, I think I know where this is going. And then um. Kodja was like, I know exactly who to get on this. So he called Abra and like a week after, Kodja, um, Kodja and Abra came through and Abra, he went straight in the booth. 
he didn't like chill with anyone, he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he just went straight in the booth. He said, turn me on in the headphones and keep it on loop. And he was in there for like 30 minutes just writing. And he was like, yo, I'm ready. And I think he'd done it like one take and the whole studio just went off like, <laughs> no one could believe it. But um, yeah, after that, I just like, yeah, this is definitely a banger. That is such a story. So how long was the process from start to finish? Ooh, maybe like three and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's not that long. I think getting it mixed on mastered probably extends it to about a month. But um, yeah, that's about it. And you say, obviously, you've got a really good relationship with Kojo. Yeah. Um, he's also up for best newcomer this year. But do you have a moment in your career where you felt like you broke into the industry properly and you were like plugged in with everyone and all the right people? Um, if I'm entirely honest, I, I don't necessarily feel like that like right now. Like I know a few people and I know who's, who I'm good with and the people that I'm around a lot, but um, like really tapped into the industry, is, is, I think there's another level to that. So I think you guys have to wait and see until we drop some more heat for that to happen. I think so. I think that's definitely about to change. How do you feel about the fact that MOBOs are bringing back the best producer category next year? Do you know what? I'm very proud. And um, I'm not necessarily saying that because I might not even be nominated, but it's really good to see that producers are getting more acknowledgement. And, you know, there's so many great producers out there Nana Rogue, Still Bangles, Maniac, like there's so many, but um, everyone's just doing their thing. And I think it's only right that, you know, an award is, is put up for best producer. It's time to shine the light on the producers as well. Stop hiding in the studios. <laughs> and speaking of, what is your studio setup at like? Where do you record mostly? Um, well, it varies. Um, if it's someone I'm quite close to, like Kojo or some of my boys or something, then I usually record from home and do demos at home. And then once we're happy with how we're sounding, we'll go to a professional studio and get it recorded there. But if it's um, like a single setup session that, that I've booked in, then I'll, go to just, I'll just go straight to the main studio and just work from there. So which other UK artists would you love to jump in the studio with? Um, there's quite a few actually. Um, Nines, big fan of Nines. Um, Mist. I'd like to get in the studio with Mist. Um, Notes as well. I've actually been in the studio with Notes before, but it was quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. Um, I feel like if we jumped in the studio now, we'd we'll probably create something a lot different. I saw a tweet from you um, recently, and it said, lots of artists are collaborating too casually, rinsing each other's source. The scene is small enough. Doing a feature should be sacred. So you're obviously quite selective about who you get in the studio with. Definitely, definitely. I just feel like, like I said, the scene is quite small and I feel like a lot of like link-ups are happening just because like, okay, I'm doing well, you're doing well, let's do something. Which is cool, but you know, the music doesn't feel as significant as it could be. Like it doesn't blow my mind away when I hear these two artists collaborating, which I feel like should be happening. But that was all I was really trying to say, to be honest. Yeah. Got to keep it about the music, of course. So what advice would you give to other aspiring producers in the game? Um, have fun, definitely have fun. Um, try to experiment as much as possible and listen to as much music as possible. Don't stick to one genre or the genre that you like to make. Listen to all types because there's loads of ways to get inspired. How about um, the obstacles that you've had to overcome throughout the journey so far? Um, yeah, it has been quite tough actually because I've been producing for quite a while. But um, I think my problem was not always feeling like, like I was good enough as a producer. So. I'd make something and think, nah, I don't like that. And there's a lot of stuff that like I've thrown away and I've regretted it. So I always feel like I could do better or I could be better than myself, which is is good, but it's bad at the same time. But um, another obstacle would probably be just finding someone that I was able to work with diversely. So someone like Kojo, 
before I met him, um, there wasn't really people that I could really work with over and over again. It might be like I'll make one or two singles with him and then move on. But luckily, someone's someone like Kojo, they're quite diverse, so we go well together. Yeah. And you must have had a moment where, I mean, you said that obviously you always want, you always look back on things and songs and projects and you think, oh, what could I have done differently to improve that? But you must have a track or a moment where you thought, okay, this is quite sick. I'm pretty good at what I do. Um, I think I got that feeling of done talking. Like that was a beat that I was quite confident about because usually I don't send things straight away. I'll sit on it for maybe two days, three days and I'll listen to it over and over and see what else I can add to you. But um, as soon as it was done, I was just like, yep, just sent it straight out. But um, yeah, there's definitely a few beats that I'm proud of, definitely. Good, good, you should be. And coming back to your social media, I saw um, that your name on Twitter is offline, right? Is that how you prefer to keep things? You prefer to stay low? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it just makes life a bit easier, to be honest, because um, I'm not someone that's like really good at like juggling things. So I've noticed when I'm online quite often, there's a lot more of a flood of like requests and emails and stuff. But usually, if I just keep, stick my manager's email in the, in the bio, say I'm offline, they'll just go straight to my manager in it. So yeah, it's just, it just makes things even easier for me to be honest. Would you say that social media has helped you in any way with your career? Definitely, definitely. Um, I actually found out about Kojo fans through social media. So, like, we was following each other on Twitter and stuff. We didn't actually work on anything for a while, but um, I think the whole sound that has create, created through, like, YouTube and SoundCloud and stuff, I think it was because of social media. So I'm definitely grateful for social media. For sure. So, finally, what is next for GA? Um, get a few more sessions in with some of those artists that I mentioned. Um, starting work on Kojo's album. Um, hopefully, maybe do my own single. Maybe, you know, but um, yeah, I think those are the, the immediate plans right now. Sounds good. And I look forward to that if that's going to happen. I feel like a lot of producers are jumping on that wave it's a good idea well best of luck with best song at the mobo awards and we'll see you there